Welcome everyone to another observability clinic. Today we're talking about CSPM notification automation, reducing the security alerting noise with Dynatrace CSPM. Um, for, to me, uh, with me today is Tobias. Tobias, you are the principal cloud security engineer and team captain at Dynatrace, and you have built the stuff that you're going to show today. Yes, well, uh, I was customer zero, of course. <laughs> we had an engineering team uh, really building this based on what we already provide out of the box with Dynatrace. So um, the overall idea here was um, that we use the CSPM findings from AWS Security Hub to improve our cloud security posture. Mm -hmm. So um, in recent years, uh, AWS uh, positioned the AWS Security Hub as a very centerpiece of everything security mm -hmm. within AWS. And therefore, uh, we figured uh, using the cloud native uh, solutions makes a whole lot of sense. And we just need to ingest those findings into Dynatrace, process them, and our overall security workflow then ends in a Jira ticket assigned to the respective resource owner so they can fix whatever is currently not how it should be. So yeah, um, to kick it off, um, as I said, uh, we are using what we provide already. Um, integral part for feeding uh, the security hub findings into Dynatrace is the generic Dynatrace log forwarder. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with the S3 log forwarder, they work a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, in the end, it's a lightweight solution and um, the AWS security hub, the recommended architecture is that you enable it in every AWS account, mm -hmm. and you have then a master security account where all those findings are aggregated. So you have one point of interest normally, uh, but you can also, of course, do it for every single of your cloud accounts. If you have different Dynatrace tenants whatsoever, mm -hmm. wherever you monitor them, this is free, uh, up to you how to set this up. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, um, yeah. I will be showing you the scope of one account, although being uh, interesting findings from all our cloud accounts. And I think this is a pretty impressive what you show here, 400,000 findings that are coming in on a daily basis and then really condensing it down to something like three Jira tickets per day, because um, as we said earlier, the noise that gets generated by too many notifications can be overwhelming it's also not practical so you are really condensing all of this and folks there's links throughout the presentation that we show you can also find the links in the description of this video uh, but i think the best thing about these videos is that we always bring things to life exactly so uh, of course i'm going to demo this to you i uh, just wanted to briefly still go into mm -hmm. how this works so it's being interested in the grail mm -hmm. and then uh, with the now uh, Dynatrace platform and the workflow engine we provide, uh, you are very um, free to um, as however process them as you would like to. So uh, this workflow and the blueprint you uh, can use is uh, out there in the public already. Kudos once again to the AppSec team who engineered this and did all the magic to process this according to our pre-existing workflow. So uh, I wanna highlight that we adapted the workflows to our processes and not our processes mm -hmm. to the workflows. So uh, this gives you a lot of flexibility here. Um, stepping one further here, um, yeah, uh, we saw there are lots of findings. Um, they were coming in and of course you, as you correctly mentioned, this needs to be condensed, otherwise it's not actionable. You get fatigued, and well, I also don't want to fill up everyone's backlog because mm -hmm. everyone is busy already, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, what we did here is, of course, uh, I will be now switching to the demo, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully, everything is working as expected. So, what we need to do here is first off, you can import the workflow and then adapt it to your needs and likings. Mm -hmm. um, you can see here already, there is um, a configuration step you need to take. So you can then um, assign the fallback user in case the resource you're monitoring does not provide any, uh, any owner information. Mm -hmm. um, you also, of course, uh, as it's scoped down to one account, 
um, need to highlight this very account. Also, not every uh, finding AWS Security Hub provides is of interest to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we've now did is we have one run um, where we create all already existing findings and then we start to use it incrementally. Mm -hmm. So meaning uh, we won made it quite an effort to get everything fixed that's pre-existing. And then from there, we run it every single day and only zero to three tickets are being created per account. Mm -hmm. So in this, I already tried this out. Uh, we will have a few findings and then tomorrow, I'm quite certain we won't have any findings anymore. Mm -hmm. And this is right now assigned to me, but the uh, responsible um, account owner, whatever account you have, um, should then be not bothered too much with stuff. Well, as long as they don't misconfigure anything anymore. And Tobias, maybe just to recap on what you show here, the workflow config params, the idea is you are ingesting the security findings into Grail, right? From multiple different accounts. Now in this workflow, in this first step, you basically configure what type of data this workflow should actually analyze from which AWS account, exactly. also what type of findings, because as you said, not every finding might be interesting or not every category of finding. So this is a great way to configure what the workflow steps that are following this one should actually do. And I think you, you use the demo account here. So folks, in case you're seeing an AWS account, that's just the demo account that we're using. So no, no sensitive <laughs> information is shared here. Yeah, awesome, good to know. Exactly. He always keep an eye out on that. Uh, some um, configurations are of course, because of our Jira ticket configuration or Jira configuration in general. Uh, you can see here certain fields we are setting already because we want to automate as much as possible. I don't want to have the need to look into a ticket mm -hmm. and adapt 10 fields, just the engineer is then happy that he has all the information, he or she has all the information mm -hmm. uh, needed. So that's very important here. Also, of course, there are uh, fake data steps. So in case just you want to test it and make sure everything is uh, going as expected. Also, we have certain uh, owner tags. We leverage when you monitor the account with Dynatrace, which is not needed per se, but highly recommended. Otherwise, you won't pulling those tags. Mm -hmm. Then we will also automatically um, determine uh, the assignee. We have an account owner. Okay, this is the fallback, mm -hmm. but there are multiple resource owners. So if Andy run something misconfigured in my account, then Andy should get the ticket and not me. Mm -hmm. So that's the overall idea and strategy at Dynatrace, how we handle things like these. Mm -hmm. um, of course, as you can see, you can adapt it to your liking. Uh, we now have two different branches and this is set up here. The one things uh, we group by account, there are certain findings in AWS Security Hub where you just want to create one ticket because, for example, it applies to all regions, like uh, whatever, root user. You would get this finding uh, over and over again in every region, although you just have one global resource, and therefore I just need one ticket yeah. because it's fixed in one place. Done. Uh, same for guard duty and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, then we, on the other hand, have things we want to have grouped by resource. So um, if Andy runs a EC2 instance with an unencrypted EBS volume with misconfigured security groups with uh, whatever else, I'm the SV1, this should be on this very resource and group together. So he also gets one ticket mm -hmm. concerning the same resource. So, well, when you start fixing stuff, we will probably fix all of them and not just one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we want to try to keep the noise Nope. down yeah. as much as possible. Yes, this is being configured in those two sections. Um, and then we branch out. So um, this is exactly as the name states, you have a uh, fetch findings by account, fetch by resource. Um, as already mentioned, if you wanna create the first initial tickets with all pre-existing findings, you need to comment out this line because once you did that, in the future, every 24 hours, we go back in time and just create tickets for 
those findings created in the last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. And for the initial start, you will need to comment this out. Mm -hmm. And then you comment it in again, and you have the fixed time trigger. So that's then applying. I've now set it to 11. So because tomorrow we will be starting for this account, mm -hmm. creating it at the same time. Okay, then this is being stepped through. Um, you can also have a look how what's being returned here. This may not be of interest for you. Um, also, we then look into Dynatrace. Do we monitor this account? Do we monitor this resource? Do we have in, in, uh, additional information we can leverage? Mm -hmm. So this can also be easily adapted on your end. So uh, quite cool, of course. Um, here is the step where we enrich the information we have that we pulled from the Dynatrace entity model, then some post-processing and also um, how the charity tickets should be looking like in the next steps. You can see that here also um, to your liking. You can split this up. All our workflows are highly adaptive mm -hmm. and can be customized to match your pre-existing workflows. So that's quite cool. And in the end, of course, we are actually creating cherry tickets. Mm -hmm. So um, that's basically it. Um, this is, you should have a good point to start out with, with the uh, workflow, uh, Jason, we have public, uh, uh, public made publicly available on uh, our homepage. And then, well, do whatever you want to do with uh, the findings. Of course, uh, we are now going to run this workflow and see what's coming out. So bear with me. Should not take long, but still, as most of you know, demo time is always okay. a critical point in a presentation. But it also allows me to kind of recap what I learned. So as the workflow runs, the first step configures which accounts I'm interested in, what type of uh, areas I'm interested in on an account base, on a resource base. Then the next steps actually query the security findings that have been pushed to Grail and say, are there any new findings on this account in these groups? Are there any findings on those resources? If there are, then you are looking up additional information that we have from a Dynatrace perspective on those entities. As you mentioned earlier, God forbid, but mm -hmm. if I would have an EC2 instance, my name is on the tag, and then we know it's monitored, and so we enrich this with additional information and then you prepare everything to create Jira tickets or update tickets uh, in case there's really new findings that just came in. Exactly that. Perfect. You can also, before creating Jira tickets, just uh, disable this very step. Mm -hmm. uh, I would need to go back, edit workflow, and you stop here and you see, okay, two tickets are being created. I can see, uh, of course, in Jira format, uh, what the content of this would be so I feel comfortable and uh, not by accident create 5,000 tic uh, 5, tickets, tickets yeah. and my engineers will probably well have a not so good time and therefore I won't have a good time anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. for this very day at least. Yeah. Um, so uh, we now can have, of course, also look how this then looks in the end. Uh, sorry. Here we go. We created, just to go back, Briefly, uh, we see here it was two tickets. Here it was two tickets. Mm -hmm. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then tickets were created. You can also have the result log. So this is also cool that you can see the key, which also helps a lot of in troubleshooting. Mm -hmm. And you can build further automation on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to briefly step in here, we see here, okay, we have a vulnerable security group, which is also in the title. We have found something on account level. And just to show you how this looks in the end, that's it. So uh, lots of this stuff is filled out by the workflow, like found by um, category. Also the security rating is set automatically by finding, uh, taking what is in the finding from AWS Security Hub already and slap it on the Jira ticket so I don't need to touch anything. This ticket is as good as it can be fully automated. Also, AWS Security Hub immediately, immediately provides information. What is this about and how to fix it? 
which is really cool. So you don't need to add anything which then needs to be maintained whatsoever. You take this and every engineer should now be able to take action, fix the underlying uh, issue, and mm -hmm. that's it. Pretty cool. And so again, to recap, because I always like to recap so I understand everything. You basically use Dynatrace workflows to automate steps that you would have otherwise done, you know, semi-manual, right? Basically looking yes. at new findings, trying to figure out who is responsible for it and then creating tickets. You codified all of this in workflows and workflows leverage the data that comes in from AWS because it's pushed in to Grail. And so the workflows can fully automate all the work that you are- Exactly. Doing. I don't need to do anything anymore. I just want to know, okay, did everything run as yeah. expected? And that's it. My engineers get the tickets and well, I'm Perfect. off for good. I just need to, well, if someone reaches out to me and needs further help or whatsoever, then of course I'm helping out, but I know that it's done. Cool. Let's go quickly back to the slides because I sure. think there is a couple of things that we want to make sure. Um, so this can all be implemented, as you mentioned, by everyone out there because the template, the, the workflow that you have uh, shown, Folks, you can just download it from the doc page. We will also add these links to the description. Now, what I also like that you mentioned is, A, everybody can customize this. Yes. yes. And not only customize what type of AWS accounts or findings that are interested in. Also, I know you are using Jira here. Technically, you can use any type of tool because we have other integrations as well, sure. but we're using Jira internally. So very popular nowadays is, of course, Slack. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to even create a ticket, but let's say, um, yeah, you do something and then you immediately get a Slack notification. Not everyone in an engineering or software company uses Jira. Mm -hmm. You also have sales engineers or whomever, mm -hmm. which may only have Slack because they don't need access to Jira. And then they still get not notified with all the information mm -hmm. uh, to be able to action, uh, take action and fix their stuff. So we improve our security posture and keep it secure. Cool, very cool. Easy as that. Easy as that. And also, the, this is a description how you actually get the AWS Security Hub information into Dynatrace by forwarding the logs. Now, Tobias, what's next? Is there anything? Of course, there are improvements plans. So, of course, uh, what's next is uh, we want to have this for Azure and GCP2. Mm -hmm. They provide similar findings with whatever native uh, tooling they provide. For GCP, is the SCC. You get this for free, all those findings. Mm -hmm. For Azure, you will probably need uh, the uh, Defender for Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and works very similar that you push it into Dynatrace, adapt your workflows and fields which you want to extract, and done. You can reuse the same approach. Of course, the AppSec team is also looking into testing this and providing this to all of you for free. And then you can have your improved security posture on all your hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. And then there will be further improvements um, from, in terms of automation or which Jira project we are currently looking in. Or um, maybe you are having a central Dynatrace tenant um, where you don't monitor all your AWS accounts already and you want to pull information from a third party. Mm -hmm. You can do this as well from an uh, in a workflow step. So you then yeah. get the resource owner if you have any other uh, resource information available somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So this is up to your liking and highly customizing. Yeah, really cool. So I, I really like to recap, we are using this internally. We've built this internally. We are sharing this with the public. Um, we are leveraging, obviously, to Grail because all the security incidents, uh, the findings will be pushed into Grail with workflows. You're automating what you normally do as a security engineer, trying to find other new findings. Then we are extracting ownership information from the entities that we monitor. But as just as you said, you could, if you have ownership information somewhere else, as part of the workflows, you pull this in from an external tool, right? Because this is the power of workflows. And then you are creating tickets if needed without over um overburdening people with too many alerts i think that's the, the point of it yeah exactly and also i don't want to touch anything manually and run after this this needs to just work, work. yeah awesome tobias thank you so much for this thanks for having me it was a great pleasure yeah have fun with our workflows uh, i'm sure you will face a few improvements and yeah. that's it from our end i guess yeah thank you see you next time bye, -bye. bye.